Hi, and welcome to In Focus. Uh, this is Jabbar Al Obaidi. I'm bringing uh, this program from the University of Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates. This is In Focus, and it's jointly produced by the College of Communication and its uh, studios and in focus for BTV9 Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Uh, so welcome to this new episode from Sharjah, the United Arab Emirates. And in the studio, my guest is uh, Professor Abdurrahman Azzi. He's not just a professor, he's the dean of the College of Communication. And he's not really just the dean of this uh, great college, but is also is a well-known scholar. So I will uh, take, uh, take you with me uh, through his journey in terms of his scholar contributions uh, and also his administrative job, as well as we will touch on the cultural sides of the story from in focus. Uh, Dr. Abdurrahman, uh, thank you. And uh, l let me begin with, with something uh, really important. Um, you know, when, as I said in, in my uh, introduction, uh, you capture the, the three elements. You, you capture uh, the scholarly uh, background. You capture also the abilities to lead uh, a college is, is vibrant uh, with this vibrant community. And also, uh, you have a great experience in terms of the uh, cultural uh, interconnectivity uh, through your experience. So what's brought you uh, to this side in, in communication and media and journalism, please? Thank you very much, uh, Professor Jabbar, for inviting me, inviting me to your program, In Focus. And now uh, I would like to send my sincere greetings to cable TV9 Bridgewater viewers on this thank occasion. You. Thank you. Um, my training was mostly in journalism and media sociology. I am a graduate of both University of Algiers, that is my home country, and North Texas State University, which is now University of North Texas. Uh, since 1985, I have been teaching communication media with special focus on media and culture in many uh, universities in North Africa, the Middle East, and Asia, starting with University of Algiers, that is in Northwest Africa, and King Saud University in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates University in Alain, that is another university which is just two hours from here. And uh, since 2006, here at the University of Sharjah. Yes. And also I taught uh, communication media at IIUM, University in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Yes. Uh, so our focus is mostly on how the media is affecting the value system in Arab and Muslim society, taking into, con in into consideration the global development in the field. So we are kind of combining uh, local and global dimensions in the way we teach communication. And research-wise, I lead a team of scholars and a number of graduate students yes. working on media and values, the relationship between media and values. values. And actually, when we talk about values, we talk about traditions, culture, religion, history, civilization. We incorporate all these dimensions under the term values. And we are, in a way, active in, in, in that uh, area. And we do organize uh, conferences, local, regional conferences on the subject. And we have issued actually a journal called Journal of Contemporary Studies of Media and Values. Now we are in, are in issue number five. Nice. And um, of course, um, I am doing research. I am a dean uh, of the college. Um, yes. When you talk about uh, social values, you know, and, and you captured almost uh, three regions, yes. I would say, uh, or two regions. So, yes. But if you, if you consider your 
uh, background when you were in the United States. Yes. So that's, that's, it has its own cultural components yes. and social values. Yes. And then in Algiers in, in the home country, and yes. then in the Arabian Peninsula, when in Saudi Arabia, and now in the, in the United uh, Arab Emirates. Emirates yes. what, what, what's the commonalities, f you know, if you could map that in, in terms of so social values yes. and the cultural uh, components in, in it? In, in terms yes. of the communication and media and how they they relate to it, actually, technology is. Uh, you may view technology as a neutral phenomena, but the way technology functions in a society yes. will ch will change from one society to another based on uh, culture, traditions, social interaction, mm -hmm. communication, history, and civilization. And uh, basically, a part of the uh, value system is what we call in the West media ethics. And actually, media ethics is part of this process. We are working on uh, developing the knowledge of media ethics, both at the intellectual level, talking about theories, and at the professional level, in terms of okay. codes of ethics and, and media practices. Yeah. And we actually um, are talking about something which we share with other cultures and civilization. Actually, we. We think that the, there is a dimension in, val in ethics which is universal, which cut across different yeah, cultures. Different and cultures, yeah. and um, we are working actually with uh, some scholars in the United States, like uh, Professor Christian Clifford, who, has, who is called the father of media ethics yes. in the United States. And he has developed this idea of the uh, global media ethics, uh, whereby there is a level of ethics whether it comes from philosophy or from religion, which is shared by human beings wherever they are. It's called humanism. Mm -hmm. In other words, we, we feel as human beings that we share certain values. And if we follow our uh, natural um, uh, um, uh, construction, then we can find that we know what is right and what's wrong and what, uh, uh, what's good and what's evil. And what is ought to be and what is not ought to be. So there is an area which we share, it, it, it cut across cultures, and we need to develop that area to create more communication and understanding between and among cultures. Um, uh, now at your capacity as the Dean of the College of Communications, yes. how much of reflections or how much of connectivity or how much of feedback from what you just uh, uh, outlined yes. that you, you can find in the curriculum, for example, um, yes. in, in your college? Actually, since about uh, three years ago, we were uh, embarked in a new vision uh, in line with the uh, university logo, which says University of Sharjah, where civilizations meet. Meet, yeah. And this is also in line with the vision of the, uh, His Highness, the Chancellor of the University. And basically, some of the components of, the, uh, of our programs in the College of Communication is the first one is the emphasis on quality education. And in doing this, we uh, try to connect our programs with international standards. In other words, making our programs in line. Yes with international standards in terms of content, diversity, uh, assessment, and accreditation. Those are processes by which we can move our programs from being um, or perceived as local or parochial to programs which have an international dimension. And actually, the university is, very, is moving, and the college also, very fast to have this international dimension yes. in, in all its programs. And we are working to create what we can call a cosmopolitan and, and global mind, whereby we can communicate. This is communication. And we are uh, open. We, we exchange ideas. We express ourselves. We, we talk about our, our identity, our history. At the same time, we benefit from others. And we exchange. We develop something new. This is one uh, component of our program. The, the second program is research. And actually, we are engaged in both uh, theoretical research, mostly in, in my case, media ethics, or what we call media and value systems, and also doing 
uh, empirical studies on media audiences. And we have created uh, two centers at our college, which are very important. One of them is uh, called PARC, Public Awareness Research Center. What we do is we connect with media institutions like the, the Charger Television, and we conduct surveys okay. and empirical studies on how audiences deal with different programs in those channels. And here we involve faculty members, graduate students, and we do actually um, statistical analysis and provide uh, So that's on, on yeah. in, in the acad academic area. Yes. So how many um, departments you have in the, in the actually college we and have, uh, tracks or, yes. or whatever concentrations you call them? Yes, actually we have two departments. Uh, first department is uh, Department of Public Relations. Okay. That's wh where we have most of our students. Okay. As you know, it sounds familiar. Yes, sounds most familiar, students yeah. prefer to uh, to work in public relation because that's where the market is growing, and the perception is that you uh, you can find your way easily. Especially you can find the, the job. The, the market in the United yeah. Arab Emirates is, yeah. is expanding; it's becoming more global. So yeah. there is a special interest in public relations. And then we have another the department. It's Department of Mass Communication. That is what you can call the traditional uh, um, uh, field, w which involves uh, journalism, radio and television, and multimedia and graphic design. Okay. Um, most of our students in the mass communication are in radio and television, okay. followed by graphics, and we do have few students in, yes. in the journalism yes. program. Plus, we are also a bilingual college. In other words, we work both in Arabic and English, and we have a separate programs program in general mass communication, nice. which is exclusively in English. So that's why, I mean, I told you we communicate even within different languages. So uh, we are kind of a unique college which offers programs in both languages. And now you, your students come from uh, the Emirates or come from uh, different areas? Uh, uh, actually, countries? we have a, a diverse uh, student community in the college. Yeah. Um, many of them come from the uh, Sharjah Emirate okay. and from other Emirates at the United Arab em Emirates. And then we have students from uh, many different Arab countries. This is a second uh, type of, uh, of student. They, they represent uh, a significant number of uh, of student of the population, yeah. And then now, since we have another program which is in English, we do have students also from Africa, from Asia. So we are really a diverse uh, community, yes. and we interact. We create different experiences in the college, and we are expanding. And I'm sure with the the, the development of this English program, we can attract also students from Western countries. So, so you have uh, local students, and then you have regional students yes. uh, from uh, from the Arab world, and then and from then, Africa and, they are, and uh, Asia, they are yes. international. Yes. So this is really a, a nice combination because the trend now is to encourage uh, students, especially with with two components or two elements, which is a study abroad and, and internships, yes. and yes. and uh, and that will lead me to uh, your your job as a dean. And also, I know uh, your passion is doing your own research, and um, I, I noticed that uh, even in the book exhibitions, uh, you have many uh, uh, new titles. Yes. Um, so how you balance, how you strike a balance between uh, your administrative uh, responsibility and your commitment to your scholarly work? That is usually a difficult thing to, to do because um, in my case, uh, research is part of my passion. So I kind of exhaust myself sometimes doing more than what you, you expect from a dean. But then we have, um, we have staff, we have committees, we, I mean, in other words, we, we work as, as a team. In other words, we work together and then we, uh, we have a vision we are clear what we want to do, and we try to do as much uh, as we can. And we keep, of course, connecting ourselves with the global environment. Actually, we have uh, a memorandum of understanding with three Western universities. Uh, one when you say Western, uh, you mean where? 
uh, United States and Spain. Okay. We have an agreement with uh, University of Girona in okay. Spain. Okay. They have a, they are a little bit advanced in what they call uh, creative graphic design. Okay. That is a field which is not uh, very much developed uh, here, but we are trying to learn from them. And we also have a memorandum of understanding with UMass at Loyal. And now we are working on exchange of students and we plan to send some of our students to take some courses in summer at that university. And we also have a memorandum of understanding with University of North Carolina. And now we are hoping to have another memorandum with your university. University of University. Water University. Um, we are interested not only in student exchange, we are also interested in faculty exchange. Yes. We have a diversity of faculty members from different regions of the world and also we are interested in, in doing research in areas of media and culture and media ethics and global media ethics. And uh, we think that the, the more we communicate and cooperate, the more we understand and, and, and benefit from one another. Yeah, you, you repeated uh, you know, the, the concept yes. or the phrase of global media and glo you know, media ethics. Yes. Is this is a, a, a hot issue in, in the Middle East? Like when, in, ter yes, in, in, terms of, yes. in terms of the perception uh, that um, probably broadcast or being boomed or being produced by the media in, in, in the general West. I'm not talking about the United yes. States. And is, is this a something, uh, is a, as a problem, is it problematic? Yeah, I think there is a problem because uh, the perception here is the, first let's talk about the local media and yeah. the, the regional media. Uh, lacks uh, enough uh, ethics in, in the way they portray events and the way there is a lot of, uh, you can call the disintegration in the way they, they report events. And there is also a criticism of the Western media in the way they portray the region. And as you can uh, see, there are so many stereotypes, there are so many misunderstandings. And we think that one of the reasons for this is the lack of enough media ethics in media practices. In other words, uh, we lack integrity, we lack uh, 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 preciseness, we, we lack facts, we lack uh, enough communication, we do not how, understand. How, how do you think uh, through, through education and through colleges and curriculum, how are we gonna address this yes. issue of uh, you know, wrong portrayal and also yes to send or to endorse a wrong perception? Uh, I think education, as, as uh, you have mentioned in your uh, lecture in inter intercultural communication, education maybe is the most important element where we can have some progress in terms of intercultural communication. Yes. Because outside education then you have so many misunderstandings and mm -hmm. then you have politics, you have stereotypes, you have history which but education is the best way by which we can educate the minds of people. Yes. To be first to, to understand the other, to respect the other, yeah. to have the ability to show the uniqueness of one's identity and culture, and then try to find ways by which we can grow as human beings. And there is a human dimension. That the reason why I say media ethics, because that's the area yes. where actually you, you can touch the human beings as human beings. And I, I'm sure people have similar feelings with regard to what's right and what's wrong, but they need to listen to one another, they need to accept the differences, and they need to, uh, to work together to find common understanding at least at the level of education. And that's once you have done some progress at the level of education, yes. I'm sure this can in a way expand a little bit and touch is issues of uh, media practices and uh, do, politics. Do, and do people talk about this uh, wrong yeah. portrayal and, and perception? I'm, I'm talking about the local minds if that's... Uh, yes, uh, yeah, actually know, uh, people feel they are misrepresented, misrepresented. By, by the media because as you know uh, the media focus on um, sensations and negative news and uh, wars and crises and tension. Whereas actually, society has so many different things, and okay. 
you have culture, you have uh, development, you have communication, you have diversity, you have... So there are so many elements and in the media seems to capture only one dimension of reality, which suits, of course, what we uh, are used to call news values. News values so, is something so, which is uh, unusual, something so, which so, is negative. So, uh, Dr. Razi, if, if you are asked to give uh, a friendly advice to yes. um, the audience in the United States in general, yes. what would, how you put it for them? That's, I think, number one. And, and number two is, what kind of challenges uh, do you feel that they need to be addressed uh, directly yes. through the curriculum and teaching or also by uh, way of covering uh, some issues and topics related to the Middle East in general, let's say, let's say to, the, to the United Arab Emirates and also to the world? Yeah, I think when the, one element is not to rely only on the mass media in knowing what's happening in other regions, especially the Middle East. Yeah. You need other uh, sources of knowledge, like one of them is education, but you have books, you have literature, you have uh, knowledge in general. So, uh, of course, uh, people seem to be affected by the media because they are more exposed to the media, but actually reality is more elaborate and more um, uh, truthful when you incorporate other sources of knowledge. And one of the sources is education. The second thing is the, the way we, we teach students. I mean, in terms of uh, when we talk about uh, global education, there are so many uh, still misconceptions and stereotypes that you do find in textbooks and yeah. they are not as open. I mean, there is a progress in the last, let's say, maybe uh, 20 years. I mean, we are becoming closer and we seem to have more knowledge about ourselves than we were, let's say, in the past. But still, we need more work in terms of trying to uh, understand the other and look at the society, not only from one dimension, but from all the dimension. And because at the end, uh, human beings are very similar. They only face different circumstances and they act in, in certain ways because of their environments. So basically, um, more sources of knowledge, more openness, um, questioning the stereotypes and the dominant views about anything, raising questions about what we know, and trying to- From all sides, From right? all sides. Of course, we, we do have also misunderstanding and some stereotypes about yes. the, the West. Yeah. So actually, we are doing what we call double criticism. In other words, we criticize ourselves, and then we criticize the other. It sounds fair. That's it not sounds easy. fair. No, it sounds yes. fair. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't know uh, uh, our producer how much time we have, uh, um, and I, I would ask uh, the last question: if uh, if you can um, give us um, a sense of the futuristic um, line for studying communication in the Middle East in general and in the, in the United Arab Emirates in particular? Yeah, I think we, uh, what we need to, to do is to build on the experience we have right now and then uh, look at the, uh, some of the challenges that we face. Uh, one of the challenges is the way we practice media in, in, in the region, in, in the Arab world. Yeah. We need uh, to be more professional. We need to, to acquire the skills and the, the profession itself. And we need to educate uh, reporters and journalists about the ethical dimension of communication, which is a little bit missing in media practices, either here or in the West. And of course, we are not at the same level of development, but you can notice this uh, absence of what we call ethical mind in the way we do communication. And I am sure with more communication, we will be able to find common grounds and work within this what we call global ethical mind. Well, this end with this uh, note uh, with the ethical uh, uh, demands and also with the global media. I thank you so much uh, for your contribution. It's, uh, it's very informative. And thank you for watching In Focus. Uh, this is the first episode that we were able to produce jointly between the College of Communication and uh, In Focus uh, at Bridgewater uh, Cable TV 9. Uh, this is Jabbar Lubaidi saying goodbye.